All right, let's have a look at sources and what the main difference is between sources and integrations. Diving into sources first. So as you're here in clay and you hit create new and then table, these are all your sources right here. So this is where you can pull data from directly into clay. Um, and you know, we'll, we can do a quick uh, walk through of all of them. We'll start with companies. So these are all the company sources. These are all the people sources. And then you have a few other ones as well. First one's pretty obvious. You can find companies from LinkedIn, um, then find jobs from LinkedIn. So you can look for specific uh, jobs based on titles, keywords, etc. And then as a next step, you can enrich, you know, um, the company that posted that job and you can then use that as a, um, well, as a source for your data. You can find local businesses using Google Maps, which is a pretty interesting way often to build lists. So we can use this one. Um, or if we want to scrape really big lists without all the manual, you know, work that clay, um, makes you go through to get bigger lists. Then there's Epify, which is not a source we'll dive into in just a second. Then store leads. So if you're targeting e-commerce companies, then store leads is a source you could use. Then you can look at companies that you currently have in HubSpot. So in your CRM, or you can import companies from CSV. That's some, this is the one that I use the most together with this one right here, um, where usually we get data from Apollo and we get it into clay using uh, the CSV function. Then for people, you can get people from LinkedIn. You can also first get companies from LinkedIn and then get people from there for a little bit more um, advanced or more, more target list. I suppose you can find people from sales navigator. So you go to sales nav, you grab the URL from sales nav, you drop it into here. You do pay one credit for every, um, every, let's say row. So every result that they get where well, you can get the same thing pretty much for free if you're using Phantom Buster. So you use Phantom Buster to scrape the, um, um, the sales navigator search. And then you just pull into clay that way and you're saving yourself a bunch of credits. Um, the only reason why I would use this one today, Phantom Buster was down. So I ended up using them. Phantom Buster is pretty much never down. So you would pretty much never use that one. Then uh, you can use GitHub as a source. Again, you can get context from HubSpot if you already have them in there and you just want to do some quick, you know, enrichment or scoring and get it back into HubSpot. And that's what you would use. Loxo, not something I ever use. Uh, I'm not into recruiting, so um, we're just really focused on, you know, on, on sales lead generation as a use case. Uh, same as HubSpot, if you have contacts in close and you want to score them, then this is how you would do it uh, or enrich them. And then you can get people from, uh, from a CSV. Again, if you export it from Apollo or from Zoom Info or where have you, what have you, then you can uh, import them that way. Or start with a Google search. So maybe you've seen my video on Google search operators. So you can, you can use that. Um, or there's some different use case. If you want to get like certain blogs in there, um, you can do it. So, um, I, I might actually do a video on that where you can say, okay, all the blogs from the last 24 hours that include the keyword called email, get the blog find who wrote it and reach out. You can do something like that with using Google search as a, um, as a source, then import data from webhook. We have a special section on that in the rest of the course. So I won't go into that, but that's another one that, um, uh, that you'll likely use quite a bit. If you want to set up, let's say streaming tables, uh, again, more on that later. You can find people directly from Apollo, but um, it's pretty limited. And um, I, we often don't really use that one. I definitely recommend, you know, if you have the option to do the big CSV export from Apollo and get them into here. Um, type form, not really, you know, it's a little bit outside the scope of this course. So I'm not going too much into that one. Phantom Buster is one that we will be using later in the course. It's one of my favorite tools has been for, 
years and years and years now um, and that pretty much never changes they're really really good at what they do and it's one of the main tools i recommend everyone to add to their stack as well um, you can again get records from salesforce score them enrich them dev radar not something that we're that we'll be using Edge table you can pretty much treat it the same you know as any crm you can enrich records from there mixed panel outside the scope of this course Appify, another tool that uh, we'll definitely be be diving into. And I'm really happy that um, uh, that they added the direct Appify integration. Appify is a tool that, um, uh, that came on my radar, I think, maybe a year and a half ago. And they've really taken off and they've really gained a lot of popularity in the lead generation space. And rightfully so. It's a great tool, a lot of great use cases. Like I said, one is if you want to do bigger larger you know google maps scripts but there are a whole lot of use cases and we're going to build some pretty exciting um tables in this course using appify and an rss good old rss is um if you know if you want to monitor certain sources then you know that goes into here and um that you can enrich that so that way you can build a streaming table whereas with with this one right here, it doesn't automatically refresh. So the use case I mentioned earlier, if you want, for example, you know, the all the blogs of the last week that mentioned cold email, you would have to come here every Monday morning and, and run it again. Whereas with this one, you know, whenever there's a blog published that contains those keywords, it automatically gets pushed into Smart Lead, uh, into Clay, excuse me, and then Clay will, you know, perform whatever steps you've set up next automatically so that's that so these are sources and then when it comes to integrations you have them here on the workspace settings so integrations you can think of them as you know either enrichments so you can enrich data from an integration or as a destination so you have source enrichment destination sources we just went over integrations you can say okay i got data from a source now let's use one of my integrations to enrich it um, or i got data from my source maybe i enriched it maybe i didn't now i want to get that to a destination that is also an integration so we can have a look at this table that i showed earlier then all the you know under add enrichment whatever comes up under here, those are, you know, integrations. So you have your integrations right here, but you have like data providers, sequences that, you, that, you know, that are destinations where you can push data towards, but those are integrations. And whenever we're talking about sources, we're talking about what we first, you know, mentioned, what we first went over in this video, where you get your initial data from then um, we'll likely just limit the scope of this course to the native sources from from clay and then integrations are things that you can use to either push data towards or enrich data from that you got from your sources so whenever we're talking about sources or integrations those are the main differences that you need to keep in mind